So I brought two stories today, um, but first of all, several people have told me that's the best conference in B2B tech in Germany. Thank you very much for having me. I think it's an amazing achievement pleasure uh, being here. Maybe very shortly, before we speak actually about the Mango, what do we do at, uh, at Choco? We build technology that helps businesses in the food supply chain, like um, wholesalers, um, suppliers, restaurants, canteens, to run the business more efficiently, waste-free, and help them with process automation. Um, we raised around 330 million US dollars in venture capital to date with the largest player globally in, uh, in what we do. We focus mainly on the US and Germany, and we are likely one of the five to 10 largest startups here. Um, the first story I want to speak to you um, is about a mango, and the second story I want to speak to you is about simplicity and and digitization. So around 12 years ago, um, I visited a friend, and, and, and he's a mango farmer, and he lives in Colombia. And then, I, and then I went there. And what's interesting about the mango is they grow on massive trees and become very old and very large. And then you have kind of like the mango hanging there, and it's a big fruit, and so you can harvest it, it once a year. And so I asked him, what is now happening with the mango now that you harvested it? And he says, look, I'm going to sell, sell it to a harvest manager. And then I ask him, okay, what is a harvest manager? And he tells me, look, we have mangoes, our neighbors have mangoes, our neighbors' neighbors have mangoes. And so the harvest manager tells us, you harvest on Monday, and you on Tuesday, and you on Wednesday, so we don't harvest all at the same time, because then there will be too much mango on the market, we want to throw it away, and we would get massive financial losses. And that really inspired us to build Choco, and what happened afterwards, really a long journey of understanding the supply chain, and I want to give you a, a brief insight into how it, how it goes and what's so interesting about it. So let's assume um, the, the mango farmer harvests 100 mangoes, and that will sell it to the harvest manager. But the harvest manager will only buy 90 because that's what they believe is in demand. It's not such a big problem for the, for the mango farmer. They will say, you know, I, I throw five away, but five I bring home to my family, and we eat it, and everyone is happy. The harvest manager has 90 mangoes, will sell it to someone who consolidates all of the mangoes in all of the country, let's say Colombia for an example, who will eventually only sell 80 to them. Again, not such a big problem, five will bring home to my family, five eventually go to trash. Who will sell 70 to the exporter, puts it in a container ship, brings it all across the Atlantic, container ship arrives in Rotterdam, the importer buys 70. Again, 10 lost, not a big problem, it's only 10. Who will then sell six to the wholesaler, who will eventually sell 50 mangoes, to the supermarket where you might buy them today, to the restaurant where you might eat them today. And so as such, we, you, uh, we lose over 40% of all of the products along this chain, but at no individual step we use many. At all of the steps we just, use, uh, we just lose little. And mango obviously is just a tiny example of all of the foods that we're eating. So um, behind me you see like a, you know, just a, a very stereotypical, stereotypical Berlin dish, and you will find the rice, which eventually took a similar complicated round, but it came from Indonesia, and you will find shrimp from China, and you will eventually find uh, some garlic inside from, from, from Morocco. And so all of these foods took actually very long and very complex routes, and we lost a lot and wasted a lot uh, on that. Now, why am I telling you this story? It's because actually it's a, it's a, massive, it's a massive opportunity. So when we just look at the, at the food supply chain as a market, how big is it? The market is worth around 7 trillion. So in, in German, it's like billion. It's one, around 7 trillion uh, euros. That's nearly three times the size of the whole automotive industry. So it's humongous as a, as a market. If we just take the waste, so I tried to look the mango a bit ugly on top, so that's around 40% of the mango. If we just take the waste in the whole food supply chain of all of the products, just that market is worth more so waste is worth more, food waste is worth more than the whole automotive industry as a sector. It's, it's humongous. It's a, um, it's a massive market and it's a massive opportunity. And what, you know, with, with massive scale obviously comes massive responsibility too. 
So if we look at it from another angle, so that was kind of the economic angle, let's look at it from an environmental angle. Then what's interesting is that the food supply chain, yeah, so the, the whole system that brings all of the foods from origin countries to like 8 billion consumers around the world is responsible for nearly one quarter of all greenhouse gases, all, all carbon dioxide, all, all CO2. Um, cars are responsible for 2%. Just waste, just food waste emits as much as five times as all cars combined on the planet. So it's actually massive. And now you can, you can do a little bit of a sense check and think how much are we thinking about electrification of cars and how much are we thinking of food waste and what has the higher leverage if we actually want to have one. And so it's a massive opportunity and a massive responsibility. And so where the problem in the simplest terms essentially stems from I said we have a long chain, a long supply chain of many players. It starts with the farmers, the harvest managers, exporters, importers, wholesalers, suppliers, distributors, down to maybe the restaurant where we eat the mango uh, today. And they're not connected. So the farmer doesn't really know how much is, is needed in the first place. And so the question is how to solve this problem. It's a network problem. It's a long chain. It's a long network of different businesses. And obviously, the best technology to solve a network problem is a network technology, aka the internet. And so in many ways, um, the goal, if we want to remove this problem, is that we need to connect this industry, make it data driven and provide tools that we don't produce too much food in the first place. And, um, and what this means is that we will need to digitize. Yeah, the, the, the largest word in the industry of the last five years, maybe, maybe next, uh, next to labor shortage, is digitization. And so we will need to digitize all of those small businesses so that we can actually connect them along one chain and tell them when to produce, when not to produce. And the problem is, in our industry, it's one of the least digital of all. So below me, I think that graphic is like from, from Boston Consulting Group or McKinsey or from some fancy consultancy, and, and they make this index. And you can see some of the two least digital industries of all is food and beverage. And in periphery, it's agriculture. In fact, only mining is less digital, and mining is the act of getting stones out of, uh, out of the ground. And so in many ways, what we have to achieve as Choco is to digitize an old industry, which might be the case not only for us, but actually for many different sectors and many different industries. And so I just want to tell you now the second story, which is a bit what we found a playbook, a winning playbook for us in our industry, but that I also believe is applicable to many others. So essentially, when you want to remove food waste and when you want to digitize the system, the first thing you need to know is like how much food do we need in the first place? Yeah. How much is getting consumed? Where, where, where do we need it? And behind us uh, is a picture of a, uh, of a kitchen. That kitchen is a very nice restaurant in Paris. And, um, and, they use, and they use our technology. But it's very hard to get them to use technology. Because you can be the best restaurant on the planet, you can run the best kitchen on the planet without ever using any phone or any computer. You can literally be world famous. And so, so the obstacle to overcome, to digitalize them, is to provide a tool that they actually like to use. And this, the name of my second story is, is simplicity. So this is our tool, and my story is not, not um, about our tool in detail, but rather about the principle behind it. The picture on your, um, on your left is kind of like what a restaurant will see before they want to purchase. So a restaurant needs meat, wine, fish, cheese, all the different things that a restaurant may or, or even a supermarket may purchase. But it looks very much like WhatsApp. Why does it look like WhatsApp? So WhatsApp, with a very large difference, by far the largest messaging, the largest communicator on the planet. Why has it become so big? It's because it's super simple. It's super, they have billions of users, and they could have built many things into the app, but they did not. They could have built games into WhatsApp, they did not. They could have built you know, shopping into WhatsApp, and they did not. They could have built advertising, they, did, they didn't do it. They could have built dating, they could have built many things to the app, but they kept it simple. And this is why it's widely adopted. And so I think for digitization, what is very important is to take these principles of simplicity. Um, and I want to tell you, uh, uh, a story why. So this is an 
AI-generated picture, but it looks more or less like a very small food wholesaler. And so the largest uh, fruit and vegetable wholesaler in, uh, in New York State in the US, they're massive, several hundred million in revenue, several hundred employees, and they have around, uh, they have 17 warehouses. And in 14 of these warehouses, they use Choco, and in three not. And so I visited them and asked them, why not? And he said, yeah, you know, Daniel, we're introducing a new ERP system, and we brought it, and we need it before we, we installed Choco, and we brought it to our 14 warehouses, but the manager for the other three warehouses is going to retire in three years, and he says, I don't want to learn a new ERP system, it's too complex, so much change, do it after I retire. And now we could say, oh, wait, that's so stubborn and backward thinking and old school. But the reality is, is like, I believe he's, he's kind of right. Because when I think of a complex ERP introduction, it's like, wow, that's a lot of work. These are complex tools. It's change management and workshops and training. And it takes forever. And often it fails. And that is because he's afraid of the complexity. He's afraid of the complexity. And so if we manage to build B2B software, that is as simple as WhatsApp, then we will actually also manage to digitize very old industries because the fear of complexity will be gone. And so I think it's a very, very fundamental principle uh, that helped us. And, and, and I can give you some numbers to see how far this is scaled. So let's take some of the largest cities in the Western world. Um, uh, Paris, every second restaurant in Paris is using uh, our software. New York, every second restaurant. London, more than every second restaurant. Brussels, Munich, 70, 80 percent. We have over 14,000 of these old school, if you want so, distributors on our platform just because it's simple. It's a very simple value prop, and it's a simple to use tool, and they're just not afraid of it. And so simplicity can really scale. And now came kind of more accessible uh, beginning of last year, a new technology. It's actually not that new, it's just more accessible now, and that's AI. And AI, in my opinion, is the, is the key to simplicity, and is the key to digitization of old industries. And why is that? It's very simple. Because I can communicate with an AI like I can communicate with a human. I don't need to learn anything. I don't need to learn the new system, the new accounting system, the new ERP. I don't need to learn how to interpret data, look at data, click a button, not click a button, do inventory, don't do inventory. I don't need to do all of those things. I will just ask the AI if I have a question that answers me like a human. And as such, if AI is well packaged, it's really simple. And we believe AI is really the key to digitalization of old industries. I want to show you a small example now. It's a very small example. It's one of our softwares. And again, it's not to market our software, it's just to give an idea. So one of the problems of these wholesalers is that their customers make their orders via voicemail. Right? So maybe a supermarket needs to order fresh vegetables for the next day that usually gets delivered during the night. And so they call the wholesalers and they leave a voicemail. Anrufbeantworter. Or they send a fax. It's real. They actually send fax and they say, you know, I need like, you know, two cases of broccoli and five cases of asparagus and, and maybe 20 kilograms of, of chicken breast. And then I have to be like 100 people sitting at these wholesalers and listening to these voicemails and typing things into the system. And the problem is that they cannot act really data driven because the data is just not real time. And now what we could do is we, we could tell, oh, let's do a web shop and then purchasing software and something big and complicated that maybe their customer would never want to use. Or we use AI because AI can, can do these jobs very well. And as you don't force your customer to use a tool they don't want to use, you're going to find adoption way faster, and you're going to digitalize way faster. This is, this is uh, one example. There's voice um, here. Hi, this is Sebastian ordering for Trufonis. For tomorrow morning, could we please have two cases of asparagus? three bunches of baby dill, two cases of artichoke, and five cases of golden beets. If you could put it directly into the cooler, two cases of artichoke, and five cases of golden beets. 
If you could put it directly into the cooler, that would be great. Thank you very much. Bye bye. And so, what this uh, food wholesaler did was they will just use the AI. Instead of a human, the AI will listen to the voicemail. It will understand that whatever this person's name was, let's, let's call him Peter. If Peter orders limes, what Peter actually wants, he wants the limes that came with air freight from Peru, which is a certain article number, and not the limes that maybe uh, another, uh, another person wants, that maybe just wants the one that came with the truck from Spain. So it will take that unstructured data, it will structure it, it will pass into, into, the, into the ERP system. And by that, I could process, uh, I could automate, I could digitize a whole process in hours that would have taken me years before. Years and years and millions of investment in technology and convincing all of my customers to behave a certain way. And now we're just installing an AI and suddenly all of my process is digital. And now another beautiful thing happens. Happens. Oh, I think that's an old presentation, unfortunately. So I will just tell you what happens. So now suddenly I have access to real-time data. And when I have access to all the data, not only from the data of my customers that anyways, you know, use a, use a software, use a purchasing tool to interact with me, but also from the ones that are still old school, I can use this data, I can, I can create an algorithm on top of it, and I can actually predict what they might demand tomorrow, next week, and next year. And by that, I can have less inventory and I can have less, less waste in our example. And, and so I think in that sense, AI is also a beautiful example of how for very old school industry, you can digitize it very fast, but it's just being very simple uh, to use, but not requiring the very person to change the behavior at all. It will make this business more profitable and it would also uh, reduce waste. And as such, the Choco, um, or our vision is to enable a sustainable food system, and we believe AI is going to play a massive role there. And if your role is to digitize um, uh, an, old, an old industry, then, then I do think AI is probably one of the, the best technologies, if applied in the right way, to help you do so. Thank you very much.